Hello, today we'll be going over practice it exercise 7.11 is unique. The problem reads, write a method named is unique that takes an array of integers as a parameter and that returns a boolean value indicating whether or not the values in the array are unique. True for yes, false for no. The values in the list are considered unique if there is no pair of values that are equal. For example, if a variable called list stores the following values, 3, 8, 12, 2, 9, 17, 43, negative 8, 46, 203, 14, 97, 10, and 4, then the call of is unique list should return true because there are no duplicated values in this list. If instead the list stored these values, 4, 7, 2, 3, 9, 12, negative 47, negative 19, 308, 374, then the call should return false because the value 3 appears twice in this list. Notice that given this definition, a list of 0 or 1 elements would be considered unique. So the problem is essentially asking us to uh, take a look at an integer array and remove and return true if there are any um, numbers that are the same and false if otherwise. So let's go ahead and create our method header. So this is going to be a public static method. And because we're going to be returning true or false, that's going to be a Boolean value. So for our return type, we're going to have Boolean and our method name is going to be is unique. So is unique. Now note that is unique is going to be taking in a parameter um, of an array of integers. So we're going to go ahead and write that parameter. I'll be calling it list because the problem states list. From here, it's probably best to check the first case if the list only has zero or one elements, or in other words, zero or one numbers. So how can we do that? We can do that by checking the length of the list, right? And there is a built-in method for that. So we can check if the length of the list or list.length is equal to zero. So if the list only has one number or if list.length is um, equal to one. So what that does is it's checking to see if the list only has one number. And in that case, we're going to be returning true because the problem says that in that case, the list would be considered unique. And when it's considered unique, we're going to be returning true. Now to solve for the other cases, we're going to basically be checking each number um, one at a time. So for instance, if we take a look at the three first, we're going to be taking a look at the three and seeing is the three equal to eight? No. Is the three equal to 12? No. Is the three equal to two? No. Is the three equal to nine? No. And so on and so forth. So if you think about it for a second, you'll realize that you need one for loop that's going through the entire array um, once and then another for loop. So a nested for loop inside of that for loop that basically goes through the entire array um, one more time to see if there's any duplicates. So we're going to go ahead, create our first for loop right? that goes through from beginning so from zero all the way to the end list dot length um, minus one because remember if we go um, so the reason that I'm going to minus one is if I were to hypothetically go 
all the way to the end, we wouldn't be able to check the next number after it, which is kind of what we're trying to do here. Right, because we're checking for duplicates. So we're going to go only up to minus 1. And we're going to go ahead and create our second for loop inside. That's going to be checking again, right? So this is the for loop that's kind of cross-referencing each element in the array with the original value that we're looking at from the first for loop. And inside this for loop, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be checking uh, those two numbers with each other and seeing if they're equal to each other. And if they are equal to each other, we know that not all the values in the array are unique, and so we would return false. So if list at i is equal to the list at j, right? So if the number that we have right now is the same as the number that we're comparing it to throughout the array, then we know that our array is not unique and so we would return false. But let's say that the let's say that our program went all the way to the end without returning false, then we know that we only have unique values, in which case we would return true. And if we try submitting Oops. Oh, it looks like I misspelled length. So let's go ahead and change that. And you'll notice once I fix the spelling of length and we scroll down, we get all of our tests passed. 